So you're thinking of buying a home in Lake Arrowhead, California? Well, in this video, I will share with you seven reasons why you may think twice before buying a home in Lake Arrowhead, California. And if you stick around till the end, I will share with you a cat video. That's right, you heard me right. I have a cat video to share with you never seen before in on YouTube because I know you YouTubers love cat videos, right? And I'm no exception and we're getting after it right now. If you are new to this channel and you want to know everything about living in Lake Arrowhead, buying or selling your home in Lake Arrowhead, California and the surrounding San Bernardino Mountain communities, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you will be the first to know about the current market in Lake Arrowhead, California and the surrounding San Bernardino Mountain communities. I'm Alma Borsik with the Living in Lake Arrowhead, California team. We get calls and emails every day from people just like you and we absolutely love it. Whether you're making your move in nine days or 90 days, just give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. We're here ready to help make the buying and selling of your home in Lake Arrowhead, California, and the San Bernardino Mountain communities smooth and stress-free. Okay, so let's start with the cons. The first con is that we have limited public transportation on the mountain. We do have one bus line, it's called the MARTA. MARTA stands for Mountain Area Regional Transit Authority and uh, it goes around the mountain at key places. But the problem is that it's not gonna go directly to your house, so you have to walk to the bus stop to take the MARTA line. And that could be a challenge. Let's say overnight we had some snow. So that would be very challenging and inconvenient to have to walk to the bus stop, not to mention unsafe. So it's really important to have your own transportation uh, on the mountain. So maybe you're thinking about what about Uber or Lyft? Unfortunately, Uber and Lyft do not service the mountain area, but we do have a couple local taxi service. So let's say you are going to event, uh, an event and you know that there's limited parking at the venue, then you can call one of the two local taxi service that we have on the mountain and they can drive you to and from the event and let's say you were out partying had a little too much to drink nobody is available to drive you home then there you go you can call uh, the taxi service to safely take you home so i mentioned snow earlier and you're thinking snow in southern california well that's right in uh, lake arrowhead has an elevation of over 5100 feet and we do get snow in the winter. So depending on your circumstance, let's say you have to commute to work and it's snowing, then snow can be a real con. And that's one more reason why you need to have your own transportation. And speaking of transportation, it is recommended that you have a four-wheel drive because with a four-wheel drive, you can get away driving in the snow without having to put chains on your car. But that doesn't mean that you don't need to have chains in your car because let's say you're down the hill and by the way, when we, when we locals say down the hill, we are referring to the cities just down the mountain, like Redlands, San Bernardino, Riverside. All those places are what we call down the hill. And let's say you are down the hill uh, doing some errands, and while you're down there, it starts snowing heavily back home. Well, on your way back home, it's possible that there's a snow patrol that's stopping everybody to make sure that they have chains. Even though you are driving a four-wheel drive, they still want to see that you have chains in your car, just in case. 
Another con is that Lake Arrowhead is uh, in a designated wildfire area, so there's always a risk of a wildfire happening and getting out of control that could possibly burn your house down or your neighborhood down. But don't let that scare you. You know, I've lived here since 2000, so now it's almost 23 years, and our house that we built in 2000 is still standing. So personally, I'm not gonna let the risk of a wildfire stop me from enjoying this beautiful mountain community. In 2003 and 2006, we did have some serious wildfire that burnt down a number of homes in Lake Arrowhead and Running Springs. And after that disastrous event, most of the home insurance providers on the mountain stopped providing fire insurance. There you go, there's insurance for you. But anyway, uh, the government stepped in. They, they established this program called the California Fair Plan. And now the home insurance providers on the mountain are registered with the California Fair Plan so that when you are looking to get home insurance, the home insurance providers will uh, provide all your home insurance needs except for fire insurance and the California Fair Plan will cover the fire insurance part of your coverage. You're probably asking, so how much is home insurance in Lake Arrowhead? I did search online and one site said that the average home insurance in Lake Arrowhead is about $918 a year. I don't think uh, that's very accurate. It's probably more than that. I did ask a local home insurance provider about how much it costs to have home in insurance in Lake Arrowhead and they really can't provide me with an exact number because it's dependent on so many different factors. For example, how big is your house? Um, when was it built? What kind of upgrades does it have? Where is it located on the mountain? And then of course, um, how much is your deductible? So really the best way to find out the cost of home insurance for your home is to uh, talk to two or three uh, providers, get a quote from each one and just pick, pick the best terms and the best cost. Back in 2000, one of the main reasons why we moved to Lake Arrowhead was because of the school district. Rim of the World Unified School District was highly rated back then. But sadly, due to lack of funding, the quality of the public schools has gone down. Um, in Lake Arrowhead, the elementary school that serves the area is the Lake Arrowhead Elementary School, and it has a C rating. And then there's only one middle school that serves the mountain communities. It's the Mary Putnam Hank Intermediate School, and it also has a C rating. And now there's one um, high school, Rim of the World High School. About 900 some students are enrolled in the high school and uh, it has a B rating. That said, I do know of a family, local family, their kids went to Rim High School and a couple years ago, their oldest, oldest, oldest son uh, was accepted to Stanford. And then recently, his uh, younger sister was also accepted to Stanford. So kids do thrive despite the low school rating. Kids still do very well uh, with good family support and community support. They still manage to get accepted in the best schools in the country. And of course, there's also another option. Some families choose to homeschool their kids. So that's one option. And then a third option is that we do have a couple private schools uh, in Lake Arrowhead. They are private Christian schools that cover uh, kindergarten all the way up to high school. So that's one 
other option. And some families, they go down the hill. They have their kids go to school down the hill. Another con in Lake Arrowhead is the lack of cultural diversity. Uh, Lake Arrowhead has a population of about 9,600 and 80% uh, are white. 15% are Hispanics and there's about 2% Asian and less than 2% African American and the remaining one some percent are other ethnic groups. Uh, as you can see, I'm Asian and most of my friends are white and they've all been nice to me. So uh, in my uh, experience, it's not really much of a con, and it probably is, uh, isn't a con for most people, but I thought I'd mention it. So Lake Arrowhead is a predominantly white community. Another con in Lake Arrowhead is the U.S. Postal Service. So uh, because of the mountain terrain, it's just not practical for the mailman to deliver uh, mail door to door because some homes are not easily accessible. Uh, they may be on an access road that's not paved or some homes have really uh, a lot of stairs to get to the front door or steep driveways or uh, lots of steps going downstairs to get to the door. So it's just not practical for a mailman to deliver door to door. So uh, what we have up here in Lake Arrowhead and the mountain communities is that each mountain residence is allotted a free P.O. box. So we all have P.O. boxes and we all go to the post office to pick up our mail. And it's not really a big deal. It becomes routine. Uh, one issue that could come up is if you have your physical address in one zip code and your P.O. box in another zip code. And that's the way it is in my case. My house is in Lake Arrowhead, um, and, but my post office box is in Twin Peaks because it's the closest post office to our house and sometimes that could be a problem like for example if you order uh, if you go shopping online and your uh, online uh, store is not very very clear on how they will deliver your package and if they happen to put your physical address on the package and deliver it by U.S. Post, so it goes to the Lake Arrowhead Post Office. And I don't have my P.O. Box in Lake Arrowhead. My P.O. Box is in Twin Peaks, so Lake Arrowhead will return it to sender. So you can see that could be a real problem, but the way to handle it, it is when you shop online, you just have to be very clear with your um, online store on how to uh, correctly deliver your package. That way you don't have the problem of the wrong post office sending your package back. Um, UPS and FedEx do deliver door-to-door, uh, -door, so there's no problem there if your online store puts your physical address and they deliver by UPS and FedEx, you will receive it because UPS and FedEx will go to your door and uh, drop off your package. Lake Arrowhead is a small town, so job opportunities are limited. So most likely you will have to commute down the hill. Now, if your job is in San Bernardino, Riverside, or Redlands, uh, that's not too bad of a commute. It's about 35 to 45 minutes drive. And if you have co-workers that live on the mountain, then you can uh, carpool and that would help your commute to work. But let's say your job is in Los Angeles and um, or Orange County, and you have to drive to work during rush hour. Now, your commute could be as long as 
three hours. So that's not good. But there's a solution to that. Uh, what you could do is you can drive down to the San Bernardino Depot, which is about half an hour away. And then you can take the Metrolink to Los Angeles and also it goes to Orange County. It pretty much goes to all the major cities down there. So uh, the Metrolink commute is about an hour and a half to Los Angeles, and it's also an hour and a half to Orange County. And uh, since uh, they provide internet free internet on the train and you're not you're just sitting there you can actually already do some work if you are able to work on your laptop so in the hour and a half that you're commuting to los angeles or orange county you can already start working so there you go that's one way uh, to help make your commute to work uh, easier so there you have it, seven reasons why you shouldn't be moving to Lake Arrowhead, California. But let's say despite that, you, you still want to move to Lake Arrowhead, California. Well, my team and I are here ready to help you find that perfect mountain home. Okay, so now, and as promised, here is my cat video never seen before on YouTube. And so, see you next time and enjoy.